What's going on everybody? Arby the Pirate here and today I had a request to make a video. So here is my basic guide to building a Chimera deck. Now I'm building this deck as a beginner player so I'm not going to use a whole lot of cards that you probably won't have at the very beginning. Most of these cards are going to be very basic cards that most players have from the start of the game. Alright, now let's dive right in. The first card you will be asked to pick is the Prime card, and there are really only two choices for a Chimera, the Centurion card and the Arch Magnus card. When active, Centurion gives 300 health to the hero, and Arch Magnus gives 30 power. Now, as a beginning jungler, I would recommend going for the Centurion. Now that you've chosen your prime card, we all start building your deck. There are two jungle specific cards that really benefit the jungle. First is the Brawler Scythe. The Brawler Scythe adds damage to when you're hitting jungle minions, but there's a better option to pick. A Magnus Siphon is a great sustain card. Every time you hit a jungle minion with a basic attack, it gives you 8 health back. Paired with Chimera's Spirit Regen, this is very helpful. Now, I typically do not upgrade this card. I simply just put it in for the 3 point card you get at the very beginning of the round. Once you hit mid to late game, this card should be replaced with another card. Next, we'd like to build some quick power. Now a great card to start with is Madstone Gem, but not everybody's going to have this card. If you do have this card, I would highly recommend getting it. It's a two point card and it can be fully upgraded to get the 5.5 attack speed bonus with only five points. But if you don't have it, Adamant Edge is a great card to have. Now this is an early game card, so it's only going to be 6 points. 3 for the card and 3 for the upgrades. I recommend putting 2 power in and 1 health. And if you have an extra one, put 2 of them. So you will have 2 6 point cards. The jungler is the only hero that I don't get a ward straight away with. I usually wait until I have my 3 point Siphon and my 6 point Adamant Edge and then my third card is the Ward. Now there are several wards to choose from. A Sage's Ward, a Lord's Ward, a Magnus Ward, and a Brawler's Ward. There is also a Guardian's Ward but unfortunately I don't have it. The Brawler's Ward offers 6 power and 30 mana and a bonus of 6 power, which is good. But if you have a Sage's Ward, a Sage's Ward works a lot better with Chimera. It offers 6 power, 60 health, with a bonus of 6 power. Now, I like to keep a ward, especially all the way through the game. So, I make this my first 10 point card. Now, I would recommend putting 3 power card, a 2 power card, and a 2 health card. So, you still are building health, even with building damage. If you have a Guardian's Ward, you can build two 3-point power cards and a 1-point health card, and the end result will be the exact same. These four cards should be the first cards that you get when building Chimera in-game. Now, at in-game, you should be at 60 card points. So, as a beginning hero, I would suggest doing six 10 point cards. Now, let's build a little tank. The Amulet of the Veteran is a good card. The only downside to it is it offers nothing but health with a bonus of power. Now, you, if you have this card and it's the only card you have, you can get it. Just balance it with a full power card. For the end game, the Elder Mage Amulet is a much better card to go with because it offers power and health. 
the bonus is two points in health. So you don't have to concentrate on health while building the car. I would again recommend putting a 3-2 power with a two point health card. This will give you a total of five points in health while having six points in power. If you have two Elder Mage amulets, I would recommend putting two of them on. That way you have three in-game cards at this point in the build. At this point in the build, you should have six cards. Now you can go ahead and trade in your Magnus Siphon because you have enough sustain to not need that extra eight points. And I would recommend picking up a Wind Carver's Blade or a Whirling Wand. Now Chimera doesn't benefit near as much as some heroes from attack speed since he does have his square ability that gives him such a good burst of attack speed. So if you have a Wind Carver's Blade, I would go ahead and pick that one up. How I would recommend building your Wind Carver's Blade is a 10 point card, so 3 2 2 all power. This will end up giving you 5.5 points in attack speed, which is fine. Attack speed, there's nothing wrong with attack speed. Don't think it's a bad thing. Chimera's square ability reduces the damage when he's attacking fast. So the more power you have, the more damage you're going to do during that ability. One of the biggest issues starting as a new player is having these bonus cards. If you don't have enough power cards, build two Wind Carver Blades as 3-2 power with a 2 attack speed. And you can also get a wind carver and try to make it a 3-2-2 or some variation to get a 10 point card. You can always make a 3-3-1 and it will be 10 points. Now at this point in the build, we have a lot of power with a decent amount of health, but let's get some armor to really make it where we can withstand some damage. A tempered plate gives basic armor and health. Basic armor goes directly against those heroes that have high basic damage, such as most carries. So it's a good idea as a close range melee to get some basic armor so you can withstand that punishment from the ADC. Now I recommend doing a 3-2-2, three, two, two, 3 with armor and 4 with health. A good rule of thumb to remember is basic armor really helps out once you have a total of 10 points in health. With our Elder Mage Amulets, we have 5 points in health for each of them. So that is a total of 10, plus our Tempered Plate gives us an additional 1 point in health. And our Sage's Ward also has a point in health. So we have plenty of health to really take advantage of this basic armor. Now we still have six points to spend, and I would recommend always spending a total of 40 points on every deck you make, just so you have more options. Now, we want to look around and find a card that has power. Since you might not have a whole lot of cards, you could go with something like Staff of the Adamant. Just make sure to put all power in. But if all you have is one power card left, you can throw mana in there it's not going to really affect too much because you're still learning the game. But you can also look around for other cards, maybe some basic pin or some crit, just any card to kind of fill in that slot so you don't have a huge gap between getting your early game cards and your late game cards. After looking around through all my cards, I decided to pick up a six point whirling wand just to fill in that slot so I will have that extra bonus before I get into the in game cards and spend 10 points on new cards. Now I have two points left over. I would recommend getting two strike tokens or a health potion and a strike token. The difference in a health potion and a bump juice. 
is a bump juice gives you an instant 50 health, while a health potion gives you 90 health over 6 seconds. So a health potion is not as good when you're getting in a fight, but it offers almost double the amount of health. And that's going to wrap it up for my quick little video on how to start building decks for a new jungle hero. Now there are a lot of cards I didn't talk about. For one, Thunder Cleaver is a must on most jungle heroes. But most of y'all that are brand new and starting are not going to have access to all these cards. One way to get cards fast is by buying them with the reputation that you receive from playing matches. I would definitely go and get the five card packs that cost 10,000 rep. The three card packs that are the weekly card packs are good if they have good cards in them, but you can also waste them. 5,000 extra reputation on, you know, a couple of cards that you're never really going to use. As a beginner, I would definitely go for the 10,000 rep 5 card packs. If you have any questions, I love talking Paragon, so go ahead and send me some questions. If you want to know about certain cards that you have but you're not sure, I'll be more than happy to answer them. As always, I really appreciate you watching, and if this helped, give me some love, throw me a comment, and I look forward to talking to y'all later. I'll see y'all in the next video.